in our previous lecture we had seen that in order to represent discrete data given to us we could do so with the help of a bar graph so if you remember the example we had taken we had taken the population in 1981 for five metropolitan cities and this population was represented with the help of a bar graph now what if the data given to us is not discrete what if it is it given to us in classes so as you can see over here we have been given group data or data in the form of class intervals so in this case we cannot draw a normal bar graph in order to depict this data we have to draw a special kind of bar graph that is known as a histogram so let us find out how to draw a histogram because it is not the same as drawing a bar graph there are certain technicalities and nuances attached to it so firstly i will show you how to start drawing a histogram then i will tell you the certain technicalities behind it so firstly i consider the first class 20 to 30 which has a frequency of 3 so i start from 20 where i have marked it on the x axis now another thing you must notice is on the x axis i am taking the class intervals or the variate and on the y axis i have considered the frequency so in order to draw the frequency for the first class i start from 20 and i continue to a point in between 2 and 4 which will give me 3 so now i have managed to represent the frequency 3 but drawing of the bar of a histogram is not complete i extend this line horizontally till the point where 30 is that is the upper class limit for the first class which is also the same as the lower class limit for the next class because it is a continuous distribution so i end the horizontal line at 30 now again from this point i will draw a vertical line in the downward direction so this gives me one bar of the histogram now let's see how i can represent the frequency 5 which is for the second class i start from the point where the histogram that the first bar of the histogram has ended that is the rightmost point at the top and i draw a straight line and continue it till the point 5 that lies in between 4 and 6 and i end there again i repeat the procedure i draw a horizontal straight line till 40 that is the upper class limit for the second class which is equal to the lower class limit for the next class and again from this point i draw a vertical line in the downward direction again i repeat this procedure for the next class i start from this point where the bar had ended and i continue till 12 again i draw a horizontal line and a vertical line again to meet the x axis at 50 which is the upper class limit for the third class and the lower class limit for the next class so in this way continuing further i get the histogram as you can see now if you observe closely there are certain differences with a normal bar graph the first difference to note is there is no spacing in between the respective or consecutive bars why because as you can see i have been given a continuous distribution of data or continuous class now if there was a spacing it would mean that the classes are not continuous but such is not the case so if we give a spacing in between the bars of a histogram it would be wrong furthermore you will notice that the width of each bar remains the same now in the case of a bar graph this width remain the same basically for the purpose of aesthetics but in this case it has a physical significance because the width of each bar in a histogram represents the class width so it is imperative and important to keep the width same because the class width or the class size that we have is the same for all the classes so this is how we get a histogram so now how will i get a histogram when i have been given a discontinuous 
class interval. As you can see, the class intervals have been provided, ranges from 40 to 44, then 45 to 49, 50 to 54, and so on. As you can see, the upper class limit of any one class is not equal to the lower class limit of the next class. So I have to make an adjustment with the help of the adjustment factor. So I take any two classes, let's say the second and third class. How will I find out the adjustment factor? The adjustment factor will be the lower limit of this particular class, that is 50, minus the upper limit of the previous class, divided by 2, which is nothing but 1 upon 2 equals 0.5. So using the adjustment factor of 0.5, I will get the classes after adjustment which will be continuous. So how is it obtained? It is obtained by subtracting 0.5 from 40, that is the lower class limit, and adding 0.5 to the upper class limit. So in a similar manner, it is carried forward for all the classes. So we get 39.5 to 44.5, 44.5 to 49.5 and so on for all the classes. As you can see, the class width remains the same in each case, which is equal to 5. So now I have to plot the histogram. Let us see how we can do that. Now over here you will find an object on the x-axis, a slight wave-like structure. This is known as the kink. Now the purpose of a kink is to tell people who are reading the graph in this case the histogram, that the scale on the x-axis does not start from 0. Instead, it is starting from 39.5 as you can see. So that is the purpose of keeping the kink. So now let's see how we can plot the histogram. So for the first class, we have a frequency of 2. So from 39.5, I draw a vertical line till the point 2 and then a horizontal line till the upper class limit of the first class and from there another vertical line in the downward direction. Similarly for the second class which has a frequency of 8, I draw a vertical line in the upward direction followed by a horizontal line till the upper class limit of the second class followed by another vertical line in the downward direction. Now these horizontal lines have to be such and the vertical lines as well so that each bar formed is a rectangle. Now in this way if I continue I will get the histogram as you can see over here. Now let me introduce another term which is very important and which can be directly seen from a histogram that is the class mark. The class mark is a value which stands for or represents an entire class. As you can see, when we consider a particular class interval, it has many values in between. Class mark is that particular value which lies midway in between the lower class limit and the upper class limit. And it is the value which represents the entire class. So if I have to find out the value which lies in middle of say the third class, what do I do? I add 49.5 plus 54.5, that is 49.5 plus 54.5. How much will this give me? This will give me 104 divided by 2. So basically it is nothing but the average of the upper class limit and the lower class limit of a given class. So this gives me 52. So 52 is the class mark for the third class. How can this be read from the histogram directly? If we consider the midpoints at the top of each bar of the histogram, these points will give us the class mark. So for the third class, we had found that the class mark is 52. So this point on the x-axis corresponds to 52. And in a similar manner, you can find out what the other points correspond to on the x-axis and those points will be the respective class marks. Now by joining the class marks, we get another structure. So let us see what that is. If I join the class marks, I will get 
a structure which will look somewhat like this. Now this structure will have to be closed at both ends. As you can see, there is no class beyond 64.5 and no class before 39.5. So what is done is, these points are simply joined to the x-axis. These points are simply joined to the x-axis and thus we get what is known as a frequency polygon. A frequency polygon is nothing but the polygon we get by joining the vertices which are nothing but the class marks of the respective classes. So now let us talk about ogives which is another form of representation of data. Again in this case we are given a class interval distribution which is continuous and we have been given the respective frequencies along with it. So now let us find out how we can draw an ogive. Firstly, in order to draw an ogive, we must find out the cumulative frequency. How to find out the cumulative frequency? For the first class, the cumulative frequency will be 10. And for classes after that, the cumulative frequency will be given by the frequency of that class plus the cumulative frequency till the class before it. So for the second class, it will be the frequency of that class plus the cumulative frequency till before that class. So 13 plus 10, 23. For the third class, the cumulative frequency will be the frequency of that class, 5, plus the cumulative frequency till before that class. So 23 plus 5, 28. And likewise, for the fourth class, 2 plus 28, 30. So now let us see how we can draw an ogive with the help of this information. Now firstly, in order to draw an ogive, it is important to know that an ogive is much like a line graph, but it differs in one aspect. A line graph, always two points are joined by a straight line, whereas in an ogive, consecutive points are not joined by a straight line. It is joined by freehand. So now let us find how we can plot the cumulative frequency on this particular graph. Now for plotting the cumulative frequency for the class 0 to 5, we are going to consider the point that corresponds to the upper class limit. That is, the cumulative frequency 10 will be plotted above 5. So I plot this point as 10 corresponding to class 0 to 5 on top of the upper class limit. Similarly, for the other classes 5 to 10, I will plot 23, that is somewhere in between 20 and 25. Somewhere over here. For the class 10 to 15, I will plot 28, that will be just below 30. So this point will be somewhere just below 30. Again, for 15 to 20, I will plot 30. So over here, this point will be corresponding to 30. Now in order to complete the ogive, I will have to start drawing from the origin with a free hand. So I start from the origin and I ensure that all the dots are joined and no dot is left out. So once I have completed joining all the dots, the structure that I get is called an ogive. And from the ogive, we can directly say what is the cumulative frequency for a particular class till a particular class. And more applications of ogive we will see in future lectures.